Hey friends, I'm Steph from stephaniejenkins.com and cheapskatecook.com. Today we're going to do a freezer tour. A couple weeks ago, I took you on a tour through my fridge, exactly as it looks right now. And we're gonna do the same thing with my freezer. So in our house, we like to save money and eat healthy at the same time. It's a very balanced approach. So there's gonna be stuff in there that's not 100% healthy, but it's all on a budget and it's all very intentional. Now we've been married 14, almost 15 years and we like to buy meat in bulk from local farmers and do all of those things, but we have never had space for a deep freeze except for like one, maybe two, three year span. That's the only time we've ever had an extra freezer. Every other time we've just had to make do with the little freezer that comes attached to our fridge. And I know depending on where you live, this might be mind blowing or it might just be perfectly normal. But I see a lot of people talking about how if you want to save money and eat healthy, then you should absolutely get a deep freeze because you can buy things in bulk and all of that. And I agree, that is a great way to save money. But that's not always an option. Like right now, we actually have the space for a deep freeze, but we live in a very old house and the garage just doesn't have an outlet for a deep freeze. So we'd like to get one eventually, but that's going to be more complicated. And so right now we're just using a regular freezer and it doesn't stop me from saving money and eating healthy using what I have right now. All right, I'm gonna show you what's in there. We might have to do some cleanup because I'm not 100% sure what's all in there, but it's not gonna be perfect because we do real life. We don't do picture perfect life. So let's go. All right, here's the freezer. The fridge and freezer just came with the house. It's one of those drawers. So the fridge is on top and the freezer is on the bottom and it's got two drawers inside it. I found this helps me keep it very organized and I prefer it to any other kind of freezer that we've had so far. We're just gonna work our way through the freezer starting from the top drawer. Over here we've got our ice packs. This is frozen avocado that was about to go bad and I didn't wanna throw it away so that goes in a container and I can throw it into smoothies or even into guacamole if I let it thaw. We've got some more avocado that came in a little pack that will thaw just fine as well. And some cinnamon sugar that we made, I think it was for donuts. So it had been rolled around in the dough, it was left over, I just stuck it in the freezer so that I can use it later on. We've got some leftover, I think this is from like apple crisp crumble. I accidentally made more than I needed, threw that in the freezer, and now I can just throw that on an apple crisp in the future. Frozen almonds, nuts go bad. So if you are not eating them as quickly as you think you should, throw them in the freezer and they will last a much longer time. Um, this is the baked beans. <laughs> Classic example of why you should definitely label everything in the freezer. I like freezing things in jars. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that liquid expands. So you want to only fill it up to like you know, three quarters, five, six of the way, and then leave space so that the liquid can expand as it freezes and it doesn't break your jar. Thin mints, if you're not keeping them in the freezer, you are missing out. This is where they get really delicious. A smoothie that my son made and he accidentally added too much of an ingredient and it didn't taste right. So we just put it in a freezer bag and then he can blend it up and add more strawberries and then it'll taste delicious. These are just little ways that we avoid wasting our food. This is a somewhat failed attempt at a chocolate fudgesicle. You can see all the chocolate like settled to the bottom. Here is some broth that I made a while back. <laughs> Use ASAP means I let it sit in the fridge too long, so I threw it in the freezer. Now I just have to make something really delicious that we will eat immediately. Spicy greens, I made a big pot of Cajun spicy greens. I feel like everything in this top drawer is um, I made too much and then I had to put it in the freezer before it went bad. This is my somewhat lazy way of making ahead. I do routinely make two or three times the amount of things 
and that way I've got some easier meals that are stashed away in the freezer. It's just what works for me and works in my budget. The orange juice here, I don't usually buy orange juice, but if I am at a store and I'm gonna be running errands for a while and I didn't bring like an ice pack for my cooler, I'll just grab a can of orange juice and throw that in the cooler and that kind of serves as an ice pack for all of the refrigerated items so they don't overheat in the middle of summer. Mozzarella cheese, I really like the fresh mozzarella from Costco, but I usually can't eat that much all at once. It keeps really well in the freezer. It's amazing how much food waste you can avoid if you just learn what you can freeze easily and what does not freeze easily. I've got some bulk herbs and tea that I store in this little container in the freezer. We've got some mint over here and some sage that I've probably had for way too long. Turmeric, Again, I want to I want to keep it as fresh as possible so it stays in the freezer. And then I have just a container in my spice cabinet and I just refill it. Elderberries, these are dried. I can use them to make elderberry syrup. And then I've got two different kinds of tea in here. We've got some green tea. This is really really delicious green tea. And chamomile. I don't know why I decided some of these bags needed to be in a freezer bag and some were fine just as they are. I don't know. There it is. Ice packs for lunch boxes. I've got extra yeast over here. Yeast stores better in the freezer for long periods of time, so I always store my yeast either in the fridge or in the freezer, even though who knows how long it's been just out in room temperature before I bought it. And then over here, I've got a couple of plastic bags that I just use for like, like parchment paper. You can use that multiple times before you throw it out but it's usually got like bread or something stuck to it. So I will fold it up and I will put it in this bag and then I can pull it out the next time I make bread. Down here, I have two bags of diced tomatoes. They came in one of those massive jars from Costco and I didn't have time to finish using it. So I just put it in the freezer and we'll do spaghetti sauce or I'll do like a big batch of salsa or something with it. Red Baron pizza. This is one of the few pre-made meals that we buy. It's delicious and it's the thing that we like for convenience food. Uh, this was my birthday gift. It's just a pint of my very favorite flavor ice cream. One of our sons has a pretty bad food allergy. He misses out on a lot of the like treats that come up at parties or at friends' houses or whatever. So we like to keep these frozen fruit bars. Sometimes it's this brand, sometimes it's another brand. I'm not really brand loyal here. And it helps give him something fun that's just for him when he misses out on other things. These are our favorite kind of hot dog. We get them from Costco in bulk. Buttermilk. I actually got this from a friend and she wasn't going to use it in time. Now it's in my freezer waiting for me to make pancakes. So if you buy something like milk or buttermilk that you're not going to be able to use in time, just throw it in the freezer and then you can use it for like a baked thing. Lunch meat freezes really well too. And you might notice we don't have a whole lot of bulk local food in here right now. I haven't been able to make an order lately and honestly the freezer is pretty full. So a lot of this stuff is just from Costco. Even though I would love to have a chest freezer or an extra freezer somewhere, Someday. Having just this little space has never stopped me from saving money and eating healthy. I still buy meat in bulk. I will just clean my freezer out of anything that's unnecessary, fill it up as full as we can. Now we usually just split the bulk purchase with friends so I don't have to store all of it. This is actually frozen cubes of milk. We do get our milk from a local farm and if I freeze it in milk cubes then I can make like milkshakes and ice cream and stuff like that pretty easily in our Vitamix. So we have bags of frozen milk cubes in our freezer. <laughs> These grass-fed patties from Costco, if you calculate it out, it ends up being less than $5 a pound for these pre-made patties. So we'll use them for hamburgers, but then if I need ground meat or something, then I'll just thaw a couple of those and cook them in a skillet, and that works great for ground beef. I mentioned that we try to buy organic clean meat on a budget. So this organic chicken is one of the best prices that we can find. If I'm buying whole chickens, then I will buy them from a local farm. But if I'm looking for like convenient, boneless, skinless things, I'll get them from Costco. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, what is that? I don't, oh, okay. Chicken thighs are less expensive than chicken breasts, so I get a lot of those. This is from our favorite local farm where we get a lot of other meat and where I will stock up eventually. And some frozen broth. Chicken drumsticks, 
This is carving board. It's like thick cut lunch meat, basically. I really liked it, but I found it on sale with a coupon, so I bought like three or four of them. It's obviously not super clean, but it fit our budget. And that's just part of our balance. Um, this is gross down here. So I'm gonna clean it. I thought about cleaning my freezer before filming this video, but I get really tired of seeing like the picture-perfect freezers and picture-perfect fridge tours because, I mean, let's be honest, how many of us are actually going to keep our freezer and fridge looking like that all the time? I just think that's not something that we need to stress out about. Like, make sure that your home is sanitary, that it's decently cleaned, but let's not freak out if your freezer accumulates some dirt in the bottom, right? All right, moving on to the last side. We've got some chocolate chip cookies over here. This is actually from Chris's and my chocolate chip cookie video. We didn't feel like making the rest of the batch, so we just rolled them up and then popped them in the freezer. We'll finish baking them eventually. This is my pancake mix. It's literally just some whole wheat flour and baking soda and salt. So we've got some green beans. Oh, look, more milk cubes. I buy flour in bulk and so because it sits out for so long, I will put it in the freezer for like three or four days to make sure that there's no like I don't know if you know this, but there can be bugs in your flour, and I don't want to deal with that. So I'll put it in the freezer, make sure everything's clean, and then I'll take it out and use it. Now we get down to the fruits and veggies. We've got some corn here, some organic strawberries, frozen bananas that we use for smoothies. This is a bag of mixed frozen fruit. Turns out it had coconut in it, and no one likes frozen coconut in our house. So, And I just throw it into smoothies. We've got some frozen pineapple here that obviously froze into a big chunk. That'll be fun to try to use later. Here's a cool tip. If you've got greens that are about to go bad, you can put them in a freezer bag raw. They will freeze and then all you have to do to make like chopped greens, smash the bag up and the frozen greens will break down into little bits. You can use the frozen greens for lots of different things, but I pretty much stick to just soup and smoothies. Here I've got some frozen celery that works really well in soups. It's not quite as good as using fresh celery, but it will give you that celery flavor. Uh, this is disgusting. Again, I'm gonna wipe this out, and I'm sorry you have to look at it. Frozen bananas that have been in the bottom of the freezer for too long. They actually still work okay for smoothies, but the reality is they'll probably end up banana bread. Frozen peppers. I love having these for anything that I have to saute peppers for. I don't buy a lot of fresh bell peppers. They're pretty expensive, but these are relatively inexpensive. Frozen cauliflower. I mean, you can use cauliflower to make anything, right? And shredded zucchini from my garden last year. Still waiting to be made into zucchini bread. Uh, I think this cabbage is too old. I'm gonna throw it out. And some butternut squash that I baked and chopped. Any recipe that calls for pumpkin, I can use butternut squash. Let's go ahead and get this side cleaned up. Don't let anyone tell you that you need a deep freezer in order to save money and eat healthy. Yes, it's absolutely helpful, but you don't need it. You can still just take whatever you have and do your best with it. All right, that's it. There's our freezer. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas to help you save money and eat healthy. I'm Steph from stephaniejenkins.com and cheapskatecook.com. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time for more ways to save money and eat healthy.